Guys and gals, welcome. Today's Thursday, so you know what that means. It's time for some Comics Remixed Reviews. Let me try saying that a couple times. It's kind of like a tongue twister. Anyhow, last week I went ahead and uh, showed you guys some books that I was looking forward to reading and uh, that I eventually wanted to review. I got two of them for you this week, both from Marvel. I'm not playing favorites, I'm just going down the list. Uh, first book, ironically they both start with M. We're going to go ahead and start Marvel Comics 399, Moon Knight number 1. Written by Warren Ellis, with art by Declan Shavely. I'm sorry, I might probably, probably butchered that. Declan Shalvey. Warren Ellis is the writer. And uh, Joard Belair. Or Jordy, what the fuck? Joard, look at me. Uh, toy snob indeed. Jordy Belair is the colorist, I believe, not the inker. Let me just clarify that really quick. A lot of people probably watching this are like, Dude, why aren't you more professional? Well, if I was more professional then this wouldn't seem real, would it? Uh, Jordi Belair is the color on here. Anyway, Moon Knight number one. Um, I gotta say, I've always been a fan of Moon Knight, first of all. The look was pretty cool. The fact that he is the same, yet different from Batman. And let me, what I mean by that is, he is obviously look-wise and personality-wise, you see him crouched, he's dark, he's got the cape, you know. He... he Fans really of Mark uh, Mark Spector, Moon Knight, know what I'm talking about when I say Moon Knight is Marvel's Batman, uh, and a lot of comic fans in general would just agree with that. But as far as personality goes, there's a big difference. Uh, for those quick background on who Mark Knight is, or Mark Knight, look at me, Mark Spector, A.K.A. Moon Knight. Uh, he was at a uh, he was in Egypt. He got shot in the back by the people he was with fell in front of a statue, the Kenosha statue, I believe it's called. I, you know, I read these things, they don't read, they don't read to me, so sometimes you never know how the things are properly uh, pr announced, or pronounced, excuse me, specifically uh, Thor's hammer, I call it Molinier, some people don't, but anyway, um, it, he, quick, I'll just read the damn page for you. Mercenary, Mark Spector, died in Egypt under a statue of the ancient deity Kon Konshu, he returned to life in the shadow of the moon god and wore his aspect to fight crime for his own redemption. He went completely insane and disappeared. This is what happens next. Anyways, um, this book was pretty different. It really caught my attention when Moon Knight first appears in the book because he's not the traditional looking Moon Knight you're, real, you're used to with the hood and the tights and the cape. This Moon Knight reminded me of the Purple Man. Uh, the villain, the, Mar the Marvel villain, you know, he's all business. He also reminded me, for those uh, Spider-Man Daredevil fans of the 90s, you guys remember Blood Rose, Kingpin's son, Richard Fisk? How he had the mask and he wore the business suits and stuff? That's what this is. He's got a all, but the thing is, it's white on white. I mean, why wouldn't he be, right? White mask, everything. The only Moon Knight thing that he has is the moon symbol on the, the forehead of his mask. Anyway, looks aside, the book was pretty good. Warren caught my attention in the writing by changing it up the story, which, you know, when you relaunch certain characters, you kind of need to do that, especially when they're not A-list characters. And it's also proof that not every writer and artist team can properly launch the guy, uh, the character. For instance, back in the early 2000s when Bendis and Alex Maleev uh, jumped on Daredevil, the book skyrocketed. But then again, when they decided to do a Moon Knight series a few years ago, it flopped and they canceled it. I don't even think they gave it a full 12 issues. I think it went to like 11. But uh, Warren did a good job in taking the character, keeping it pretty much what it was, but adding a new twist to it. And in this issue of Moon Knight, we're introduced to this new version. It turns out he's pretty tight with uh, some detectives on the police force that uh, are assigned to the freak beat so it's called and those are the guys that you know are assigned the the homicide cases that don't look very normal so mr knight as he's referred to by the detectives comes in and he's able to look at the crime scene and pretty much track what kind of killer this is um turns out the killer is tracking people with pretty good physiques great muscles great looks stuff like that moon knight decide or he doesn't decide but through looking at the uh, the evidence of the body left and the crime scene and putting clues together he's able to realize that the killer is hiding way underground way under the uh, subway station 
There's a second level where a lot of the homeless are, and there's even a level under there. So he shows up, and he goes down there, all in white, and everybody keeps giving him crap because he's going underground dressed all in white. And they say, why do you do it? And he says, I want them to see me coming. That's the best part. So he goes down there, and there's this guy that looks similar to, um, what's this guy's name? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget his name. You guys help me out here. The Marvel Nuke. He looks like Nuke. That's who it is with the American flag on his face. But it's not him, obviously. Just it, The art reminded me of him. It's this guy. He's very deformed. He's got body parts meshed together. Um, weak legs, big, strong upper body. The whole point is he is an ex-Shield agent who was hurt. Shield, according to this guy, Shield didn't want to have nothing to do with him. They wouldn't help fix him. So he's be going. He's been going after all these people who have great bodies, but consider them a waste because they go to the gym, they work out, they've got great muscles, yada yada yada. But they're not enlisting. They're not signing up. They're not working for any agencies. They're not saving the world. So they're wasting their potential. They're wasting their looks. They're wasting their muscles. So he's going after these victims. He's only taking. He's killing them, obviously, but he's taking what he needs, not as trophies, but to enhance himself with the hopes that. One day, he'll be ready enough that S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to look at him and be like, wow, why did we not help you? Why didn't we take you back? And blah, blah, blah. So obviously the guy's a little, you know, touched in the head. So when Moon Knight enters the room, it's pretty cool because the guy pulls out all these guns and Moon Knight's like, don't worry, I'm not armed. And he's got the moon, moonerang, I guess. And um, he just kind of throws it to the side. So as they're talking, the guy's like, well, you know, I'm going to kill you. What do you think? You're going to come down here and take me back up and I'd go to S.H.I.E.L.D. or I'd go to jail peacefully. It doesn't work that way. And Moon Knight looks at him. He's like, I've already won. He says, two minutes ago, you didn't pay attention. It's so noisy down here. I threw the moon thingy. The, we'll call it the moon ring. He's like, I threw it. And when the guy looks down, he's got it stuck in the side of him where it's not his stomach necessarily, but he's got like this padding over it. Like, it looks like a metal plating. And uh, he's like, I threw it there. He's like, I bounced it off the wall. I figured it was important. So he's like, I've already defeated you. But one of the lines, excuse me, that Moon Knight said that I thought was absolutely brilliant and it just made me nod and says, I want to read issue two, was when the guy says, I'm going to kill you, you know, you're not leaving here alive. And Moon Knight goes, I've died once. It was boring. I didn't like it. I stood back up. To read the exact quote, because I don't want to, I don't want to butcher that for sure. But he says, I've died before. It was boring, so I stood up. Dude, that is great writing. You don't get a lot of stuff like that. This character of Moonlight also does not appear to have the split personalities, which was a big, big thing in making Moon Knight the character he was. At the end of the issue, it's re there's a flashback to before he was back in New York, and it turns out that he's not, he does not have multiple personalities, but he just actually has brain damage. And the brain is damaged because of his brain trying to establish and differentiate these different personalities that just messed up the brain tissue. Um, and, and we're kind of glance, uh, we're kind of given a, a, a little glance that there's still something not quite right up there. But uh, all in all, I am definitely looking forward to issue two. Um, the artwork in the book. Let's let's switch from the writing to the artwork. I think it fit. I want to go ahead and say it fit. I've been, I've said it on the show before. I've, I'll say it again. I am a fan of certain artists working on certain characters. For instance, John Romita Jr., in my opinion, draws a great Punisher. So does Steve Dillon. So does Tim Bradstreet. But when he jumps on Spider-Man, it's not so so to me. And now he's doing his upcoming Superman run. I really am not looking forward to that. But uh, Declan Shavley, this is a name that really I've never heard before. I'm sure I've probably seen his work and just never really paid attention to who actually drew it. But since the story captivated me so much, I felt that I need, I was like, okay, who, not just for the review purposes, but I'm looking at the art and I'm just like, damn, this is pretty good. And they use, for, for the most part, before they hit the, uh, before New, back to New York story, um, there's a lot of basic colors in this. Obviously the pure white with a little bit of black shadowing on his suit, but there's a lot of very very uh, casual colors you know you beige black red that's pretty much it you know a little bit of yellow here and there some blue but the colors just match the shading is pretty good and it's where it needs to be they do a good job of sitting here and kind of keeping you in the dark so to speak the shadowing and the sketching in the book is great 
The emotional uh, responses on the people on the characters' faces are pretty good, and then in scenes where there actually is some quote unquote daylight, um, it's also pretty clean. You know, a lot of line work as well. Kind of reminds me of Alex Maleev. Um, at the same time, it remind this book. If it didn't have the Moon Knight name to it, I would have swore Image was publishing it. Um, all in all, though, like I said, I'm looking forward to issue two. There's nothing uh, I would have done different. Obviously, I ain't no writer. Otherwise, I would have been. And speaking like things like saying I ain't no writer obviously proves that. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. Very interested in the fact that it's a different take on Moon Knight. You know, I've always liked Moon Knight. I've always been drawn to the appeal of Moon Knight and what he represents. So Warren and Deaglin, you guys definitely have my attention for Moon Knight number one. I'm gonna go ahead and give it three out of four stars. Look at that. Bang, bang, bang. Good stuff. Let's move on, shall we, with the other title that starts with an M this week. Magneto, number one. Bam, check that boy, boy out. Yeah, I know, it looks like Xavier, doesn't it? That was my first gripe with this book. As I'm reading it, by the way, the cover was done by Palau Rivera. Um, did a lot of covers for uh, Daredevil in the last recent years. But uh, Colin Bunn and Gabriel Hernandez Walta do a very good job in Magneto, number one. The thing, going back to the cover, though, they caught my attention. By the way, this is a Marvel Now book, and it is uh, $3.99 as well. The thing that caught my attention with this cover was, I'm like, I thought Xavier was dead. So if you guys really look, you can't tell me that doesn't look like Xavier. But I do like the fact that the magnetic helmet is going around it. Um, I'm kind of behind on my X reading, so I'm not sure why or when Ex Magneto shaved his head. Obviously, I'm guessing it's after uh, the death of Xavier and probably shaved it as an homage to uh, his fallen friend. But going into the story, Cullen Bunn did a pretty good job as well. You know, um, no negative reviews this week. I will go ahead and just say that. He did a pretty good view, of, uh, pretty good job of keeping me captivated from page to page. And in the story, it starts off with the murder. Of course, what good story doesn't, right? Uh, in this, uh, the way it starts is there's a bunch of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents at a coffee shop talking to one of the employees. The employee is sitting there saying, you know, hey, I've uh, I overheard some of the stuff in the conversation. You know, he was talking about genetic genocide, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he ripped his tooth fillings out. He's like, well, who, who doesn't? He's like, it's kind of a second nature, you know? It's on, it's an autopilot with me. When I make coffee, I don't really pay attention to the people here. So, you know, the way they were talking, it just seemed like very fluid, very natural. And then on top of ripping the fillings out, well, we know what happens next. And you turn the page, and the victim that the coffee boy is speaking of is sitting outside in the street on his knees. He's dead, by the way. But the reason his body is still on his knees is because it's hanging, or I shouldn't say hanging, it's holding on. It looks like Magneto shoved a stop sign and a street sign, not just the signs, but the metal poles that they're on, through the guy's mouth, out the back of the neck. So the poles on the ground, while the body, it's kind of like, you know, in the shape like, well, put the book down, but like this I could you know what I might as well just show you check that out wicked isn't it yeah anyhow so you know he says the guy he says my autopilot is making coffee and not really putting too much thought into it he says this guy's um, killing must be his autopilot then we're transferred over to a local motel where we go ahead and see Magneto in a hotel room and he's got a map on the wall he's using um, newspaper clippings and whatnot now the thing that caught well let me you know, before I get there let me continue with the story so Magneto's on a mission basically he knows he's gonna pay for all of the crimes he's committed over the years typical Magneto this has already been said this has already been done but now Magneto seems to be like on a quest so to speak um, I would somewhat compare him to the way the Punisher is on a quest to kill, you know, all the, or to terminate the villains or, or the, the bad guys, you know, for uh, harming the innocent and whatnot. But Magneto seems to be on a mission to go after those who have committed sin against mutants and kind of be their judge, jury, and executioner. Um, he knows, you know, he's probably being watched and he knows that things have been set up to see if he'll take the bait and go investigate this murder or that murder and whatnot. So, um, he does find one thing specifically that catches his attention. He ends up in the town, and the guy, or the kid, I should say, 
that's murdered these mutants is being held in a jail cell. So Magneto walks into the jail cell, pretty much does his thing. Lo and behold, the kid says he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't mean to hurt anybody. But that's when, as Magneto has said it, a spine went down, his, uh, a tingle went down his spine, his heart started beating fast. He realized what he walked into. Yes, it was a trap. And the young boy turned out to be one of those sentinels. They rumble. He can't rip the metal out of him, but he can malfunction it. He ends up terminating the sentinel and realizing that things are getting, are, there's a bigger picture than what he thought there was. Um, story was pretty interesting. I will continue reading this as well, only because it doesn't involve the Avengers. Now, right now, a lot of stuff with Marvel is all Avengers related. Everybody's a damn Avenger, you know? So it's nice to when you can read something that doesn't really... You don't have to read the X-Men books to read Magneto. You don't have to read the Avengers to read Moon Knight. You know, it's... They're self-contained. I like that. They draw me in more. They're more interesting. I don't know how you guys feel about that. If you prefer the, you know, you have to read this to read that, it's cool when it's crossovers, but not when it's constant, you know, every single issue, and it's not a crossover. Um, I do want to point out, though, that uh, Gabriel Hernandez Waddell's artwork is actually pretty good, but I don't like his rendition of Magneto. Um, he draws Magneto's face way too round, way too stocky. You know, Magneto looks like he's 350 pounds, like like Mark Henry for the wrestling fans. You know, he's just a big, big boy. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you a sample of what I mean by that. He actually, um, a couple years ago, kind of story here, there was a comic art, and there's no disrespect at all intended to this comic book artist. It's just the drawing that I'm about to show you of Magneto reminds me of the artist. And I've actually got a photo that I should probably post along with this so you guys can see it um he's, he's, right now he's doing some work for zenscope but uh his name is myrit um if i'm correct myrit michaels i believe don't quote me on that um i, I know his name is michaels i want to say his first name is myrit um but uh this drawing here this depiction of magneto reminds me of him that one right there the one here in the middle it says Magneto. You know, for those of you staring at that, I don't know if in the this one here, you see how bulky he is. Again, on top, you know, it's like he looks like Xavier with the eyebrows, but then again, too bulky football player-ish. So I'm not sure how you guys feel about that, that uh, representation of Magneto. Me, myself, I'm not a fan of it. Um, again, like I said with the Moon Knight uh, review, I'm a fan of the art matching the story. My opinion, yes. The art does match the story in Magneto, but I feel that it can be replaced and they can have a better Magneto artist. Not Nothing against Mag, uh, uh, Gabriel Walter, nothing at all. I just feel that um, Magneto can be handled in a more different way. Um, so the artwork is so-so on me. I know I just said I liked it. I do like it, but I'm not loving it. So... Um, I'm gonna for that reason alone, I'm gonna have to go and give Magneto two out of four stars. And uh, you know, like I said, story-wise, Cullen Bunn is doing pretty good. He's got the sixth gun. He's got a couple other books out there that are pretty good. I will come back for issue two as well as that. You know, I I, I love reading new stuff. Magneto's never had an ongoing solo series before. He's had a couple minis here and there, but I don't think anybody who wrote him quite got it just quite right. Um, so I'm interested. I'm interested to see what Cullen Bunn is able to do with it because the whole approach of him, you know, um, servicing justice out to the people to the for the mutants that couldn't defend themselves, I think is an interesting thing because Magneto's always been, you know, I'm all about what the mutants want. I'm all for the mutant race thriving. So it only makes sense that he becomes this like mutant vigilante for mutant rights and stuff like that. If this is the only way he knows how to go about doing it, more power to him. But uh, I, there was one thing I want to point out in the artwork here, that, um, the layout, actually, um, in the scenes where he's walking into this uh, police station where the guy's in jail. I have to show you guys this. As he's walking through, you'll go ahead and notice blue squares. Every blue square that's here is an object in the room that's made out of metal. So it's like something that Magneto is noticing here. You've got bullets. You've got a watch. You've got some screws in the wall. You've got metal latches on a purse. You've got the stars on the collars of the cops, the bullets, a gun over here, clock hands, a badge, stapler, 
jail cell bars, jail the the uh, the keys. So just things like that stand out. You know, they're different art, different. Uh, I wouldn't say different art, but different takes on it. Makes it makes uh, the style stand out. You're not just like every other artist. But I still gotta go ahead and give Magneto number one two out of four Chicago stars. I still will uh, still very interested in reading issue two. That's all I got for this week, folks. I don't know what I'm reading uh, for the next one. You're just going to have to tune in and watch. As always, for everything Comics Remixed, Breaking the Fourth Wall, Collector's Corner, The Spinner Rack, The Lockup, of course, these, these reviews. You can check them all out, comicsremix.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. But comicsremix.com is the hub. That's what you guys want. All access. We try to do it all. Uh, if you guys got any books that you would like me to sit back and talk about and just want to hear my thoughts on, review, because let us I've had an argument with uh, someone who shall remain nameless over what a review actually is. My opinion is, look, I'll read the damn thing for you. I'll tell you what I read or what was in the story. Do I like it? Don't I like it? Here's why. If there's something, if that's not a review, I don't know what is. But um, go ahead and let me know if there's something you guys want me to review. I'll give you my opinion on it. For those of you who've come and talked to me in person, you guys know I'm very, I'm very open. I'm very forward with it. I don't sugarcoat anything. I'll just tell you straight up how I feel about the thing. So uh, Magneto, again, Magneto number one, two out of four stars. Moon Knight number one, three out of four stars. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.